Hello, my name is Jimmy Bonero, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the split filter inside of the AutoStore data filter process component. The split filter has the ability to take a text string value and split it up into different parts based on a particular delimiter. For this video, I've got a configuration already prepared with all my components in place. We could use any capture component. We'll use web capture, and we're also going to look at the data filter. I've also added the document writer. This is going to allow us to output the RRT values into a text file. That way we can confirm that the values that we're expecting to see are actually what we're getting. And we're going to send all that into an output folder. I'm using the multi-router route component for that. I'll open up the web capture component. With the common menu selected, I'm going to click on add basic form. And let's call this form split example. We'll give it a field. And we'll call this field text value. We'll do the same thing for display. And we're going to leave the field type as a text field. So that way we don't have to keep typing our test values over and over again. We're going to assign some default text to that particular field. Now let's say, for example, that the text string that we're trying to split up is part of a database lookup return. And in that return, we've got different parts where each part is separated with some type of a delimiter. Let's say also that this is a person of some sort. It could be a customer or perhaps even an employee. And let's say that person has an ID number. And let's say that there's a pipe symbol that is separating each of the different parts. So that'll serve as our delimiter. And this person probably has a first name, a last name, maybe a zip code and maybe a birth date. So I've got five different parts here, an ID number, first name, last name, zip code, and a date of birth. I'm going to click OK. And I'm also going to add one more field here. We'll call this delimiter. This is also going to be a text field. And let's say that this delimiter is our pipe symbol. That way when we're testing we can test with different delimiters if we wanted to. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'll come into the components tab. We'll go into our data filter. We're going to turn this on and we're going to add a split filter. For the field name, this will be the name of the field inside of the data filter for the split filter, we're going to call this text value parts. And on the input, we're going to take our text value from Web Capture, and that's what we're trying to split up. Now, how we're trying to split it up is with a pipe symbol. So I could type that in, but we're going to take our delimiter RRT, and we're going to place that in there. This is to show that if we ever needed to do some type of logic-based delimiter for different types of text, the delimiter itself could be an RRT. So I'm going to click OK. And I'll click OK, and we're done. The, it was that easy. Setting up the split filter was as simple as just defining the input and defining what that delimiter should be. Now on to our document writer. Here I'm going to turn this on. This is going to be our text file. And I'm going to put some placeholders for our RRT values. All right, and for the first one, here in Web Capture, I'm going to take our text value, and we're going to place that right there, and we're going to say text value statically equals whatever that RRT value is. I'll also make a note of what the delimiter is. We'll place that there. And We'll also add the form name. So that way if I'm doing different tests with different forms, I know which form it came from. And now I'm going to go to our data filter section. And here I'm going to go to text value parts inside of the RT list. 
And you'll notice that within the RRT, there is, after text value parts, there's a comma, and there's an open bracket with the word substring number, and then a close bracket. What this is, is it serves as a placeholder for the substring number that we're looking for. If I take my value and I split it up, say, five different parts, which part am I looking for? So if I wanted the first part of that, what I would do is just say for substring number, one would be the first part. I'm just going to copy the inside portion of this so that way I can say that the first part equals that RRT value. And now I know that there are five parts, so I'm going to put that in five times, only replacing the substring number for each part so that way everything makes a little bit more sense as I'm looking at this when we test. Okay, and so we're done with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and we're going to set up our output folder. So in the multi-router, I'll come to send a folder. We're going to add a path, and I've already created an output folder. So I'm going to take this path, place this right into here. And again, if I'm doing different tests with different forms, I want to keep all these organized. So right after that output folder, I'm going to come into web capture. I'm going to take the form name and I'm going to use that to be a subfolder to keep it all organized. Now I'm going to name each file test underscore with the file counter and the file extension. And on the file counter, depending on how many tests I do, I'm going to pad it with zeros with a length of four. Now I'll click OK all the way through and let's go ahead and test this. Now in web capture you have to go to a particular URL in your web browser and if you forget what that URL is you can always come into the help file, come into getting started, go to web user interface where you're going to see what the URL needs to be. You would do the auto store server uh, either the IP address or the host name, followed by a colon, and then the port number, which the default for Web Capture is 3290. It is configurable, and if you do change it inside of the configuration file, you want the URL to reflect that change. And then the path to the default page. So I'm just going to copy from the colon all the way to the end. Close this out, and I'll come to my web browser. I'm going to put in my local loopback address. And at the end, I'm going to paste in that path. All right, and now I'm going to select Split Example. Click Next. And here I've got all my different parts to the text value along with my delimiter. Now we're just going to add a test file and send that over. Upload was successful, so let's return to our output folder where it's already been processed. And I'm going to open up this file in Notepad++. Right now, if you're looking at this and you see these CRLF characters, it's because in View I've got Show Symbol show all characters, and this is going to show me all the white space and all the line breaks uh, to help me analyze the text file a little bit more. And over here in the web capture section I've got my text value, it's showing my delimiter, it's also showing the form name. And on the data filter it's showing all the different parts which looks great except there is an issue where the space that was before and after each of the different pipe symbols has also been captured. So we don't want that white space, and the good news is that this is very easy to correct inside of the data filter. So let's go ahead and return to our auto store process designer. I'm going to take our split example form, and we're going to copy that back into the common menu. And we're going to modify this form name to be split example with trim. I'll leave my field section alone. I'm going to come into components. I'm going to come into the data filter. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a trim filter. This will take all the white space off of the value before and after. Now, I know that the first part of my string happens to be a person ID. So for the field name, I'm going to call this person ID. And in the data filter list of RRTs, I'll grab the text value parts. And I'm going to take that substring number. And I know that the first part is going to be my person ID. I'm going to add another trim filter and do this for the first name, which happens to be the second substring, the last name, and this was the third substring, the zip code. which happens to be our fourth substring. And finally, the birth date. That was our fifth substring. And by giving each of these different fields this name, it's a bit more identifiable now when I'm looking to configure further down into my workflow. And then these values are going to make a lot more sense. So I'll click OK, come into our document writer, and we're going to modify the data filter section here. I'm going to say person ID equals and put some placeholders for the different parts of the split. Now I'm going to place my cursor where I want the RRT to be dropped come to my list of RRTs into the data filter and I'm going to grab the person ID and place it right next to the person ID. We'll grab the first name, the last name, the zip code, and the birth date. All right, I'll click OK in the multi-router. I don't need to change anything there, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to just click OK all the way through. And let's get our service restarted. Now, with that restarted, it's best to refresh your web page. And here is our split example with trim. I'm going to select that, click Next. I'm going to add our file to be uploaded. Send that over, upload successful. Now I'll come into our output. And there is our form and file. And there we have it. We've got uh, all these different values trimmed out. We've got each of the different parts identifiable. So this was an example of using the split filter inside of the data filter, which is a, it's a pretty basic tool, but it's very useful before the days of the data filter, when you wanted to split up a text string, it was definitely possible. If you wanted to trim it, it was definitely possible. You would have had to have gone to the VBJ script process component, and you would have had to have written a little script for that. But as you can see, setting up the split filter literally took seconds to configure, and we didn't have to write a script uh, to split any of it up, trim any of the different parts. We just have to replace the substring number to get the desired part that we want from the split. And now each of these different parts, they can be used as additional metadata in your route component. For example, maybe in your folder or your file name schema for the send a folder component, the subject line, or maybe even the body of an email using the send a mail recipient component, perhaps even metadata for SharePoint upload. So with that, I hope this video has been informative and until next time, as always, thanks for watching.